Hello beautiful friends of Bookish Fam, my name is Brittany. Welcome back or welcome to Rescues and Reads. Thank you so much for hanging out with me today. I'm very glad that you are here. Today we are here to do my October Book of the Month predictions. If you are new to these videos, this is a series where every single month I come on here and attempt to predict the books that Book of the Month might feature as part of their monthly curated selections for the coming month or as potential add-on selections. As a reminder, when I'm going through these books, I'm only focusing on the books that are coming out in the month in question, so I will only be focusing on October releases. I won't be focusing on potential books that are coming out in November that could be featured or books that came out in September that could also be featured as add-on selections. That just opens the pool to widely and let's be honest we have no idea how book of the month decides when to do a pre-release or a post-release book so I'm only focusing on October releases and of course I just do this for fun I have no idea whether or not I'm going to be right or not this is just guesses based on my long history of being a book of the month subscriber now in my past predictions video I had several people ask that at the beginning of these videos prior to jumping into the predictions I go ahead and do a recap to see how I did with the prior month's predictions so that is what we are going to go ahead and do now so for the month of September, Book of the Month had five curated monthly selections. Of those five curated selections, three of them were books that I included in my monthly prediction video. One of them was an October release. That was The Intern by Michelle Campbell, I believe is her name. And because I do not focus on future releases, that was not going to be on my radar for that video. So that was not included in my predictions. The other one was a romance that did come out in September called You Again, and that was not on my radar at all. I had no idea that book even existed. So that was another one that was not featured in my video. Book of the Month also had three new add-ons available for you to put in your box and of those three two of them were books that I had talked about in my prediction video. So five of the eight selections were featured in my predictions video which is not shabby in my opinion. Now I will say going into October I don't really have strong feelings about the majority of these predictions. To be honest I wasn't quite impressed with a lot of the releases that are coming out in October which is disappointing considering it is spooky thriller month. I was hoping to see a lot more impressive releases and I just wasn't but we are going to go ahead and jump jump into the predictions. Now as a reminder I divide my predictions into five genre categories and within those genre categories I limit myself to five books. Before we jump into the predictions though I did want to mention that we already have a confirmed add-on for the month of October. It is a book called The Unfortunate Side Effect of Heartbreak and Magic by Brianne Randall. So I do believe that it's currently already available on Book of the Month's website to add to your box as an add-on for October if you are interested. I did want to go ahead and mention that here. All right as usual we are going to start with the mystery thriller horror category and the first book I want to talk to you about today is My Darling Girl by Jennifer McMahon. Now Jennifer McMahon is actually a pretty prominent horror thriller type author but if I remember correctly I don't believe that she's ever been featured on Book of the Month. I could be wrong about that but I don't remember offhand ever seeing her. So if they did decide to go ahead and feature her on Book of the Month she would definitely be a more prominent author that they have featured for the first time. I believe that this is a story that actually features a potential demonic possession. It says Allison has never been a fan of Christmas but with it right around the corner and and her husband busily decorating their cozy Vermont home, she has no choice but to face it. Then she gets the call. Mavis, Allison's estranged mother, has been diagnosed with cancer and has only weeks to live. She wants to spend her remaining days with her daughter, son-in-law, and two granddaughters. But Allison grew up with her mother's alcoholism and violent abuse and is reluctant to unearth these traumatic memories. Still, she eventually agrees to take in Mavis, hoping that she and her mother could finally heal and have the relationship she's always dreamed of. But when mysterious and otherworldly things start happening upon Mavis's arrival, Allison begins to suspect her mother is not quite who she seems. And as the holiday festivities turn into a nightmare, she must confront just how far she is willing to go to protect her family. That certainly sounds like it's going to border on the speculative. I have never read a Jennifer McMahon. I have tried and failed. I've DNF'd a couple of her books because they just were not working for me. So I do not know if her books typically tend to border the speculative or fully feature the speculative, but with a demonic possession that definitely seems like it is where it's going. So if you are a fan of Jennifer McMahon, or if this one sounds interesting to you, this is one that I would certainly keep my eye out for with Book of the Month in October. Another one I wouldn't be surprised to see is Starling House by Alex E. Harrow. Now Alex E. Harrow is definitely an author that they have featured previously on Book of the Month and this one sounds really interesting. Eden, Kentucky is just another dying bad luck town known only for the legend of E. Starling, the reclusive 19th century author and illustrator who wrote The Underland and Disappeared. Before she vanished, Starling House appeared, but everyone agrees that it's best to let the uncanny house and its last lonely heir, Arthur Starling, go to rot. Opal knows better than to mess with haunted houses or brooding men, but an unexpected job offer might be a chance to get her brother out of Eden. Too quickly though, Starling House starts to feel dangerously like something she's never had. 
had a home. As sinister forces converge on Starling House, Opal and Arthur are going to have to make a dire to dig up the buried secrets of the past and confront their own fears or let Eden be taken over by literal nightmares. If Opal wants a home, she'll have to fight for it. So that actually sounds really intriguing to me. I've never read an Alex E. Harrow, but I have heard good reviews by people who have had an opportunity to read this story. And like I said, Alex E. Harrow would be a repeat author for Book of the Month. So this is another one that I definitely would not be surprised to see. And this actually might be one I add to my box as well if I do see it in October. A debut suspense thriller that is coming out in October that I wouldn't be surprised to see featured on Book of the Month is You Always Come Back by Emily Smith. Nine years ago, July Weaver's little sister was one of the first victims of the Pacific Lake Killer, a serial killer in Georgia. When other girls began to disappear and were found dead, it was July's testimony that put her own father into prison for the crimes. After the sentencing, she fled to Nashville to focus on her music career and to try to forget the horrible past. But when her brother tries to kill himself, July is forced to come back home and reunite with her four remaining siblings. What she isn't expecting is to uncover new evidence that makes her question everything that happened to her sister nine years ago. Is it possible that July blamed the wrong person? Is it possible that the Pacific Lake Killer is still out there? As the linchpin to the case against her father and the reason the Pacific Lake Killer case is closed, July knows it isn't long before the killer will set their eyes back on her if they're really still out there. So I am actually very, very intrigued by the premise of this. You have a girl who basically got her father convicted of the murder of her sister, but it's possible that the serial killer is still out there and now she could be in imminent danger. So I am actually really interested to see this one and I will certainly be adding that to my box if it is featured in Book of the Month in October. And the final one that I want to mention is American Girl by Wendy Walker. She again would be a repeat author for Book of the Month, which is what made this one stand out to me overall. Charlie Hudson, an autistic 17 year old, is determined to leave Sawyer, Pennsylvania as soon as she graduates high school. In the meantime, she works as many hours as she can at a sandwich shop called the Triple S to save money for college. But when shop owner Clay Cooper, a man who is both respected and feared by many in this economically depressed community, is found dead, each member of his staff becomes a suspect in the perplexing case. Charlie must work to protect herself and her friends and uncover the danger that may still be at large in their tight knit community. Best selling author Wendy Walker returns with another riveting thriller told through the eyes of an unforgettable protagonist. So, right off the bat, the synopsis of this does not sound all that intriguing. It sounds kind of basic and vague. I've never really read a Wendy Walker, but I do know that she's a pretty prolific and popular suspense thriller author. If you are a fan of hers and this sounds intriguing to you, go ahead and keep your eye out for it. Like I said, she would be a repeat author, but just based on the synopsis alone, I don't have a strong feeling that it would be featured. Surprisingly enough, the horror thriller suspense releases coming out in October, I feel are very minimum overall, or maybe I'm just like not looking in the right places. I don't know. So because of that lack of selection, I'm not really sure I'm going to be surprised if any of these are featured as the thriller option for October's book of the month. Oddly enough, the literary contemporary fiction category was the hardest to narrow down. It was very, very easy to get five options, but it was not easy to determine which of those five I wanted to feature. So there are certainly a couple here that I really think could be strong contenders, but I'm not going to talk about them because it would go over my five limits. So October is certainly a big month for some strong contenders in the literary contemporary fiction category. The first one that I want to talk to you about today is called The List by Yomi Adegoki, and this is actually a debut novel. Ola is a celebrated journalist at a magazine. She is set to marry the love of her life in one month's time. Young, beautiful, and successful, she and her fiance Michael are considered the couple goals of their social network and seem to have it all. That is, until one morning when they both wake up to the same message. Oh my god, have you seen The List? It began as a crowdsourced collection of names and somehow morphed into an anonymous account posting allegations on social media. Ola would usually be the first to support such a list. She'd retweet it, call for the men to be fired, write article after article, except this time Michael's name is on it. Compulsively readable, wildly entertaining, and filled with sharp social insight, the list is a piercing and dazzling clear-sighted debut about secrets, lies, and the internet. Perfect for fans of such a fun age, luster, and my dark Vanessa, this is a searing portrait of these modern times and our morally complicated online culture. It definitely overall seems like it's going to be a commentary on social media. It sounds a little bit interesting. It is not getting great reviews, y'all. It only has a 3.41 on Goodreads right now with over 2,600 reviews so that is not promising but it is an October release it is a debut it seems like it's going to have some very relevant social commentary which is not something that book of the month shies away from featuring in their monthly selections so this certainly could be the one to look out for in October another strong contender would be a repeat author this is called everything is not enough by Lola Akinmade Akerstrom and I'm pretty sure that I completely butchered that name and I'm so very sorry but she wrote a novel called in every mirror she's black and that was featured on book of the month previously powerful marketing executive Kemi Adeyemi has finally found the man she needs but Tobias Wilkstrom thinks she's the most selfish woman he has ever met for asking him to give up his life in Sweden and move to the U.S. for her own comfort. Will Kemi be forced to stay if she wants to keep him while chipping away at her hard-earned career? As things begin to sour and challenge her relationship with Tobias, someone else moves back into the picture. Looking into a divorce in Sweden isn't what former model turned flight attendant Brittany Ray von Luden anticipated. Only jointly owned assets are split evenly between couples. Brittany gave up her career and came with nothing into Johnny's kingdom. Having had a child with him, her greatest fear for Maya includes being cut off from the resources
resources she's become accustomed to. But the man obsessed with the ghost trying to get away isn't going to be easy. And the deeper she digs into his past, the darker the secrets she unravels. After fleeing her home through a client to seek a new life in Sweden, Yasmin finds love in the arms of Yagis Selik while carving out her own small corner. But as someone from her past forces Yasmin to become a caretaker before she's ready, she now must confront and move beyond her teenage history while following her dreams of becoming a makeup artist. Everything is not enough follows the loosely intertwined and messy lives of Kemi, Brittany, and Yasmin as they interrogate themes of place, prejudice, and patriarchy in Europe, proving yet again that Lola Akamati Akerstrom is the next great voice of nuanced contemporary women's fiction. So that definitely sounds like it's going to be complex and poignant as you're following these three women and the difficult lives that they are in and possibly how they all intertwine. She would be a repeat author, so this is certainly one to watch out for. After reading the synopsis of this next one, I actually found it very interesting and I do think that this could be a strong contender. It is called Hold My Girl by Charlene Carr. Catherine finally has it all. She spent her entire life striving for perfection, obsessing over her spotless home, maintaining her pristine reputation, building her perfect family, and her hard work has finally paid off. After seven difficult years of trying and failing to conceive, Catherine gives birth to Rose, her IVF miracle child, and at last has the one thing she's wanted most of all. But one thing isn't quite perfect. Rose's pale skin doesn't match Catherine's complexion, and an irritating doubt begins to grow in Catherine's mind. Tess never got the happy ending she wanted. She underwent IVF at the same clinic as Catherine, but after finally conceiving, Tess's daughter was stillborn. Now, nearly two years later, she's approaching rock bottom. Consumed by her grief and without hope for the future, Tess is divorced, broke, and stuck in a dead-end job beneath her skill set. But shortly after Rosa's first birthday, Catherine and Tess get a call from the fertility clinic. Their eggs were switched. As Catherine's carefully planned life begins to crumble around her, Tess finally sees the glimmer of hope she needed to get her life back on track. Motherhood has always been her dream, and neither woman is prepared to share that claim over Rose. It will take a tense custody battle to decide who deserves to be Rose's mother, but it will also push them to the brink. With themes of racial identity, loss, and betrayal, Hold My Girl is an emotional novel that will leave you asking, what makes a mother? So that actually sounds like it's going to be incredibly hard-hitting and poignant. Is the woman that actually gave the egg supposed to be the one raising the child? Like, does she have as much right over that child as the woman that has been raising the child for the past two years? I'm not sure, but I'm actually really, really intrigued by that. I can't even imagine the heartache and the pain that would go into that. So this is certainly one that I'm going to be on the lookout for, for sure. This next one is actually getting a lot of buzz. It is another repeat author for Book of the Month, and I know a lot of people are hoping that it's featured. It's called Family Meal by Brian Washington. Cam is living in Los Angeles and falling apart after the love of his life has died. Ty's ghost won't leave Cam alone. His special visits wild, tender, and unexpected. When Cam returns to his hometown of Houston, he crashes back into the orbit of his former best friend TJ and TJ's family bakery. TJ's not sure how to navigate this changed Cam, impenetrably cool and self-destructing, or their charged estrangement. Can they find a way past all that has been said and left unsaid to save each other? Could they find a way back to being okay again, or maybe for the first time? When secrets and wounds become so insurmountable that they devour us from within, hope and sustenance and friendship can come from the most unlikely source. Spanning Los Angeles, Houston, and Osaka, Family Meal is a story about how the people who know us the longest can hurt us the most, but how they also set the standard for love. With his signature generosity and eye for food, sex, love, and the moments that make us the most human, Brian Washington returns with a brilliant new novel. So that actually sounds like something that I could be interested in, very character-driven, and a lot of complex, complicated character dynamics. This could certainly be a top contender for Big of the Month in October as well. So this next one is one that seems like it could be bordering on the mystery thriller genre, but does have more literary aspects over anything. It's called The Leftover Woman by Jean Kwok. Jasmine Yang arrives in New York City from her rural Chinese village without money or family support, fleeing a controlling husband on a desperate search for the daughter who was taken from her at birth, another female casualty of China's controversial one-child policy. That is typically not something you see covered in many books. But with her husband on her trail, the clock is ticking and she's forced to make increasingly desperate decisions if she ever hopes to be reunited with her daughter. Meanwhile, publishing executive Rebecca Whitney seems to have it all, a prestigious family name and the wealth that comes with it, a high-powered career, a beautiful home, a handsome husband, and an adopted Chinese daughter she adores. She's even hired a Chinese nanny to help her balance the demands of being a working wife and mother. But when an industry scandal threatens to jeopardize not only Rebecca's job but her marriage, this perfect world begins to crumble and her role in her own family is called into question. The leftover woman finds these two unforgettable women on a shocking collision course. Twisting and suspenseful and surprisingly poignant, it's a profound exploration of identity and belonging, motherhood and family. It is a story of two women in a divided city, separated by severe economic and cultural differences, yet bound by a deep emotional connection to a child. Another very hard-hitting, poignant story surrounding a child and motherhood, and it definitely sounds like it's going to explore China's one-child policy, which is certainly a very controversial law that China had. I haven't made a decision yet on whether or not I would add this to my box, but it is certainly very intriguing. Now, officially moving on into the historical fiction category, it is the newest one by Jasmine Ward called Let Us Descend. She, again, would be a repeat author for Book of the Month. She is definitely a very prominent and well-respected author who I know a lot of people would love to see featured back with Book of the Month. It says, Let Us Descend is a reimagining of American slavery as beautifully rendered as it is heart-wrenching, searching heroin replete with transcendent love, the novel is a journey from the rice fields of the Carolinas to the slave markets of New Orleans and into the fearsome heart of a Louisiana sugar plantation.
plantation. Annis, sold south by the white enslaver who fathered her, is the reader's guide through this hellscape. As she struggles through the miles-long march, Annis turns inward, seeking comfort from memories of her mother and stories of her African warrior grandmother. Throughout, she opens herself to a world beyond this world, one teeming with of earth and water, of myth and history, spirits who nurture and give, and those who manipulate and take. While Ward leads readers through this descent, this, her fourth novel, is ultimately a story of rebirth and reclamation. From one of the most singularly brilliant and beloved writers of her generation, this miracle of a novel inscribes Black American grief and joy into the very land, the rich but unforgiving forests, swamps, and rivers of the American South. Let Us Descend is Jessamyn Ward's most magnificent novel yet, a masterwork for the ancients. So if you have been a fan of Jessamyn Ward's previous works, definitely keep your eye out for this one. Another historical fiction novel that is coming out in October that deals heavily with race is called Homeward by Angela Jackson Brown. Georgia, 1962. Rose Perkins Borden returns home to Parsons, Georgia without her husband and pregnant with another man's baby. After tragedy strikes her husband in the war overseas, a numb Rose is left with pieces of who she used to be and is forced to figure out what she is going to do with the rest of her life. Her sister introduces her to members of the Student Nonviolent Coordinating Committee. Young people are taking risks and fighting battles Rose has only seen on television, feeling emotions for the first time in what feels like forever. The excited and frightened Rose finds herself becoming increasingly involved in the resistance efforts. And of course, there is also the young man, Isaac Weinberg, whose passion for activism stirs something in her she didn't think she would ever feel again. Homeward follows Rose's path towards self-discovery and growth as she becomes involved in the civil rights movement, finally becoming the woman she has always dreamed of being. So this is actually one that I haven't really seen much around, but it definitely seems like something that Book of the Month would feature. This again is an October release that I would definitely not be shocked to see featured as an add-on or as part of their monthly curated selections. And then the final one to talk about in this category, I only have three. It's called The Other Princess by Denny S. Bryce. With a brilliant mind and a fierce will to survive, Sarah Forbes Benetta, a kidnapped African princess, is rescued from enslavement at seven years old and presented to Queen Victoria as a gift. The queen, the girl, is an exotic trophy to be trotted out for the entertainment of the royal court and to showcase Victoria's magnanimity. Sarah charms most of the people she meets, even those who would cast her aside. Her keen intelligence and her aptitude for languages and musical composition help Sarah navigate the Victorian era as an outsider given insider privileges. But embedded in Sarah's past is her destiny. Haunted by visions of destruction and decapitations, she desperately seeks a place a home she will never run from, never fear, a refuge from nightmares and memories of death. From West Africa to Windsor Castle, to Sierra Leone, to St. James's Palace, and the Lagos Colony, Sarah juggles the power and pitfalls of a royal upbringing as she battles racism and systemic oppression on her way to living a life worthy of a Yoruba princess. Based on the real life of Queen Victoria's Black goddaughter, Sarah Forbes Bonetta's story is a sweeping saga of an African princess in Victorian England and West Africa as she searches for a home, family, love, and identity. So definitely appreciating some of the themes that I'm seeing in the historical fiction that are coming out in October. And I I think all of these would be pretty strong contenders, so keep an eye out for these ones. All right, y'all, we are moving on into the final two categories, starting with romance. I really only have two that I want to talk to you about. The strongest contender for me is going to be A Winter in New York by Josie Silver. Josie Silver has been featured multiple times in the past by Book of the Month. I really enjoyed One Day in December, so I would certainly enjoy seeing another holiday, wintry themed romance from Josie Silver. When Iris decides to move to New York to restart her life, she realizes she underestimated how big the Big Apple really is. All the nostalgic movies movies set in New York she'd watched with her mom while eating their special secret recipe gelato didn't quite do it justice. But Bobby, Iris's best friend, isn't about to let her hide away. He drags her to a famous autumn street fair in Little Italy, and as they walk through the food stalls, a little family-run gelateria catches her eye. Could it be the same shop that's in an old photo of her mother's? Curious, Iris returns the next day and meets the handsome Gio, who tells her that the shop is in danger of closing. His uncle, sole keeper of their family's gelato recipe, is in a coma, so they can't make more. When Iris samples the last remaining batch, she realizes that their gelato and her gelato are one in the same. But how can she tell them she knows their secret recipe when she's not sure why Gio's uncle gave it to her mother in the first place? Iris offers her services as a chef to help them recreate the flavor and finds herself falling for Gio and his family. But when Gio's uncle finally wakes up, all of the secrets Iris has been keeping threaten to ruin the new life and new love she's been building all winter long. Oh wow, so that actually sounds really, really interesting. I'm already dying to know what the connection is between Gio's uncle and Iris's mother is, so I'm intrigued. I really, really hope that this one is featured by Book of the Month. All right, and then the last one for this category I have is Love Interest by Claire Gilmore, which is actually a debut, which is one reason why I think it could be a potential contender for Book of the Month. Casey Maitland has always preferred the reliability of numbers. Now a 24-year-old finance expert working in Manhattan, she wonders if the open project manager position at her company, magazine powerhouse LC Publications, is a sign from the universe to pursue a career with a little more sparkle. That is, until she's passed over for the job in favor of the board's chairman's son. Alex Harrison is handsome, Harvard-educated, and enigmatic. Everyone loves him except for Casey. But when the two are thrown on the same project, what they discover about their company might change everything, including the dreams each of them is chasing and their mutual love interest. So this definitely sounds like it's going to be a workplace romance, maybe a little bit of hate to love. It definitely sounds cute, kind of basic, like nothing super unique or impressive. But this is one that is coming out in October and 
I think it could potentially be on Book of the Month's radar as well. All right, and then moving into the fantasy, science fiction, magical realism type category, the one that is certainly on my radar and one that I really hope is on Book of the Month's radar is The Unmaking of June Farrow by Adrian Young. And Book of the Month did feature Spells for Forgetting by Adrian Young when that was released. Adrian Young writes really atmospheric, kind of witchy reads, and I'm all about this one because I love Spells for Forgetting. In the small town of Jasper, North Carolina, June Farrow is waiting for fate to find her. The Farrow women are known for their thriving flower farm and the mysterious curse that has plagued their family line. The whole town remembers the madness that led to Susanna Farrow's disappearance, leaving June to be raised by her grandmother and haunted by rumors. It's been a year since June started seeing and hearing things that weren't there. Faint wind chimes, a voice calling her name, and a mysterious door appearing out of nowhere. The signs of what June always knew was coming, but June is determined to end the curse once and for all, even if she must sacrifice finding love and having a family of her own. After her grandmother's death, June discovers a series of cryptic clues regarding her mother's decades-old disappearance, except they only lead to more questions. But could the door she once assumed was a hallucination be the answer she's been searching for? The next time it appears, June realizes she can touch it and walk past the threshold. And when she does, she embarks on a journey that will not only change both past and the future, but also uncover the lingering mysteries of her small town and entangle her heart in an epic star-crossed love. So this definitely has a lot of similar themes to The Spells for Forgetting. It takes place in a small town. It sounds like there's going to be a romance. There's disappearance. There's witchy vibes. There's all kinds of things going on, plus a family curse. Like I said, I am absolutely here for it. I am hyped to get to this one, and I sure hope to see it featured in October for Book of the Month. All right, and the very final one that I have for this category is actually called Lilith by Nikki Mamory. And this, from what I understand, is supposed to be about Adam's first true wife. Before Eve, there was Lilith. Lilith and Adam are equal and happy in the Garden of Eden until Adam decides Lilith should submit to his will and lie beneath him. She refuses and is banished forever from paradise. Demonized and sidelined, Lilith watches in fury as God creates Eve, the woman who accepts her submission. But Lilith has a secret. She has already tasted the fruit of the tree of knowledge. Endowed with wisdom, she knows why Asherah, God's wife and equal, the queen of heaven, is missing. Lilith has a plan. She will rescue Eve and Asherah, restore balance to the world, and regain her rightful place in paradise. Lilith's quest for justice drives her throughout history, from the ziggurats of ancient Sumer to the court of Israel's queen Jezebel, and to the side of a radical preacher in Roman Judea. Noah's wife, Maria, Jezebel, and Mary Magdalene all play their part in Lilith's enlightenment. In the modern age, as she observes the catastrophic consequences of a world built on inequality, Lilith finally understands what must be done to correct the wrong done to women and all humankind at the beginning of time. Inspired by ancient myths and suppressed scriptures, Lilith is a thought-provoking and ambitious novel with an evocative literary voice and triumphantly engaging heroine. Oh my gosh, it's yes, a triumphantly feminist retelling of ancient creation myths in the tradition of Madeline Miller and Claire North. So that actually sounds really, really interesting. Um, I would be intrigued by this. That would be something very outside of my comfort zone, but I'm kind of digging the vibes on this one. So even if it's not featured in Book of the Month, definitely keep it on your radar for October release. All right, everybody, that is it. Those are some of my top predictions for October's Book of the Month's curated monthly selections or as add-ons. So we're going to see how accurate I am come October 1st when they are released. If you believe that I have missed some important releases that you feel are more likely to be featured on Book of the Month, please feel free to comment down below some of those books. Or if you've made it to the end of this video and you are not feeling chatty, go ahead and leave me an apple emoji in honor of Adam, Eve, and Lilith. That one just really intrigues me for some reason. And as always, if you like this video or if you just like me, please be sure to give it a big thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already. I aim to post one video a week, sometimes two, depending on what I could do, and I would sure love to connect with you in one of those next videos or on any of my other social media platforms. I always leave links to my Goodreads, Instagram, and IG threads down below if you would love to chat with me there. You all know that I love connecting with you, but until next time, y'all, bye.